organizing this and sort of keeping us all together while we're uh, so separate. Um, just like Robert, I encourage everybody, please interrupt me. Um, I'm in my living room and this is really, really weird. So um, I'd much prefer to hear from you all. Um, so this is joint work uh, with Juan Campos and Panos Parpas, both of Imperial. Um, I've already put on uh, Twitter the slides um, and encourage you to look at those. Um, I'm going to go through as many as I can, and if I don't have time, to I, oh, I was hoping that was the question already. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I, I've put them on Twitter already. Okay, great. So basically, the point of this presentation is that I think the Lasser hierarchy is the, the coolest thing ever. Um, and so we're going to be looking at the Lasser hierarchy, and we're going to be looking at um, a set of problems that's almost identical to what Robert was looking at. Specifically, we're going to be looking at max cut. So he was looking at uh, box QP for the computations. We'll be looking at max cut, but same quadratic objective subject to uh, linear constraints, except that um, Robert was looking at uh, every all those variables are continuous in box QP, and we're going to be looking at all 0, 1. Okay. Um, so I really like the, the Lasser hierarchy. Um, the problem that at least I have with it as somebody who really likes computation is that um, the, the first order we can solve often. Um, the second order, even if we're going to use the really nice sort of sparse relaxation, say Waki et al. 2006, um, I still personally have difficulty uh, getting these things to, to solve when we're working with medium to large scale polynomial problems. Um, so I'm giving a list of related work here at the bottom. Um, this is not enough, but all to say that basically this idea of sort of being in between either kind of strengthening the first order Lasser or taking some linear approximations of Lasser tend to be uh, fairly common. Um, so we are sort of in that family of work. Okay. So the questions that I wish to ask myself is basically for the max cut in particular, um, can I sort of use part of the second order without using all of it? And then how does this compare to what is known to be very, very good for this class of problem? Um, so there's some really nice software that's dedicated for max cut. This is big crunch and this is big map um, of really great research groups. And then also triangle inequalities, for instance, are known to be quite strong here. Um, so max cut, in case anybody hasn't seen it, um, I'm going to be taking the instance, and I pulled this off of Wikipedia, um, where basically I'm going to be dividing a graph into two sets of nodes. Um, and as you can see, if I divide the graph on the bottom right um, into the two white nodes versus the black nodes, there's going to be five edges cut. That's going to be more edges cut than any other sort of division of the nodes. Um, in mathematics, um, it's written as in the bottom left hand corner. Um, it's as I said it where you're trying to maximize the number of edges cut except for in addition there might be this uh, parameter W that maybe gives me more points for cutting one edge uh, versus, versus another edge. I'm going to be looking at a maximization problem. Uh, so any relaxation is going to be uh, sort of above the optimal solution and any feasible solution I get is going to be below the, the, um, the, the globally optimal solution. Um, so basically, all of the variables in max cut are either going to be one or negative one. That is, they're either going to be sort of white nodes or black nodes. Um, and then uh, we end up each one of the variables is uh, represents a, a node and basically a negative one in one camp, positive one in another camp. Okay, so basically in max cut, you assume you're given the graph, you assume you're given the weights, and then you have to find the cut in the graph. Good. Okay. So there's been a lot of really cool work and a lot of really cool work using the Lasser hierarchy on the max cut problem. Um, and a very common thing to do, um, and these are papers from 2006, is to say I consider the two graphs that are in the upper right picture here. Um, first, what I'll do is I'll do something like add a chordal extension. Um, a chordal extension is that if you have a cycle of four, it's going to have um, any sort of uh, set of three that's in the cycle is going to be connected um, uh, via a line. Um, and so more technically, I could say that um, all the cycles of four or more have a chord uh, connecting uh, the, these three. Good. So what happens in 
uh, these relaxations um, is that first I don't even add a relaxation. I start by adding something that is necessarily going to be true. Um, I add this U transpose U. Um, and all that is, is it's an additional constraint that doesn't add anything to the original max cut problem. It's just going to strengthen my relaxation later. Um, so what this UU transpose is, um, is that uh, U is a vector with monomials up to degree D. So if say I have uh, one, two, and three in, my, um, uh, in one of my maximal cliques, um, then the monomial is going to be zero, x1, x2, x3. Um, and then I'll multiply them together. And so I'll get all quadratic terms. Um, and basically because we have this rank one matrix that is basically u times u, we know that it has to be positive semi-definite. So this is, this is what Waki et al and Lasserre uh, do. Um, note that I could have done my maximal cliques uh, differently. And what um, the Waki et al and the Lasserre papers are doing is that they're saving me from adding the entirety of the, um, the Lasserre relaxations. So I'm not having to add uh, U, U transpose with, um, or U transpose U, I'm doing this right, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not having to add this entire huge matrix um, with every single variable in the problem, I'm only adding with respect to the maximal cliques. So this is the, the sparse version. Then what Waki et al do um, is, and what the Lasserre paper does, is that they now take a relaxation. So that um, U transpose U becomes this moment matrix. And this in this moment matrix, we take the relaxation. And so basically every single one of those monomials becomes a new auxiliary variable y. And these, um, this new aux these new auxiliary variables y uh, go into the, the problem so that in the objective we have these y's. And then in the constraint, we now just have that the moment matrix has to be uh, positive semi-definite. Now, um, this is of course a relaxation, but one of the things that these papers do that's really quite intelligent is that to the best of their ability, they put all sorts of integer constraints that they know to be true already into this relaxation. So for instance, because they define these uh, variables x to be either negative one or one, they know that no matter what, x times x is equal to one. And so when you end up with a monomial that would be say this one in position two, two, um, that would have been x1 times x1, they know that's equal to one, and so they just replace it with one. Um, so not only does this uh, Waki et al and uh, Lasserre uh, relaxation sort of, um, not only is it sparse by only, by only making these moment matrices with respect to um, the, uh, the maximal cliques, but also this Waki et al and Lasserre relaxations um, improve things basically by putting some of the integer constraints into uh, the moment matrices, which is great. So basically, um, let's say I have a maximal clique that includes uh, one, four, and seven. Well, then um, my, uh, my first order Lasserre equivalent, first order Lasserre is in red, um, and my equivalent of the second order Lasserre is in black, it's gonna be the red plus the black, right? So as we know with the Lasserre uh, relaxations, um, go up higher levels in the hierarchy and this matrix is gonna get much, much bigger. Good. Okay, so now finally, after all that, um, that blah, blah, I get to um, some of what we actually did. Um, and the first thing um, that, that we did, uh, you can also find in a paper uh, from 2018, it's in Siam Journal of Optimization. And basically what we did is we introduced a new parameter, uh, we call it R. And what happens in this new parameter is that I sometimes am taking the, um, the first moment matrix that, that uh, corresponds to the first order in the Lasserre hierarchy. And sometimes I am taking um, the, the, the second order uh, matrix. And when I will do that depends on uh, the sort of size of the maximal clique. So for instance, um, if I was to set R is equal to zero, that is absolutely equivalent to the first order of the sparse Lasserre hierarchy. Um, R is equal to zero 
would mean I would uh, never take this uh, second order uh, moment matrix. If I was to take R is as big as uh, the largest maximal clique, um, so the maximal clique of largest size, then um, this would be equivalent to the second order in the sparse Lasserre hierarchy. And so now anything between R is equal to zero and R is the biggest uh, moment matrix, and I can kind of tune how um, big are these uh, matrices that I'm adding. So um, for instance, let's say I have um, R is equal to two and I put uh, one and four uh, into one maximal clique and then another maximal clique has one, two, and three. Well, I have R is equal to two, um, one and four is a, is a clique of two. And so I would use um, the second order Lasserre for uh, that maximal clique. And for the larger maximal clique, I would use first order Lasserre. So note that um, I, what I would do is that I am increasing the sort of the, how high up I'm going in the Lasserre hierarchy uh, for the smaller uh, maximal clique. Um, if I had been using all first order Lasserre, it would have just been the, the red in that first matrix. Okay, cool. So just to give another example, um, this would be first order Lasserre in that exact same example I gave. Um, this would be second order Lasserre, and this partial relaxation is kind of um, using second order Lasserre when the, the, the maximal cliques aren't too big for us computationally, and it's using um, the first order Lasserre relaxation when the maximal cliques are getting kind of big. Now, uh, of course, um, this particular idea of a relaxation is after the papers that I've mentioned here at the bottom, but already if you look at um, uh, work of um, uh, Monique Laurent and uh, Miguel Angelos and others, um, you know how tight this relaxation is going to be um, because of work that they've done in previous. So if F star is the answer to the max cut problem, um, we know that the relaxation answer um, to second order Lasserre is going to be at least as good, uh, if not better, than first order Lasserre. So basically this uh, QS2 is going to be less than or equal to uh, QS1. Um, and that's basically saying uh, second order Lasserre is tighter than first order Lasserre. We also know, um, and this is uh, what these, these papers at the bottom prove, is that um, the metric polytope, and that's first order Lasserre plus the triangle inequalities basically, is um, going to be maybe not as good as second order Lasserre, but it's going to be better than, than, than first order Lasserre. And it is known that if you go up to if all of your maximal cliques are of size four or less, it is known that you're not going to be beating the triangle inequalities in terms of tightness. Um, so basically what is happening is that if I am to choose R is less than or equal to four, the only reason that I would choose R is less than or equal to four would be say computational, is that for some computational reason, maybe that the metric polytope has too many uh, linear, uh, inequalities and you know putting the SDP inequalities together with the SDP constraints together with the linear inequalities isn't quite working computationally. That would be, be the only reason to choose R less than or equal to four. Um, bigger, um, you might get tighter, or you would at least get something that was different than the metric polytope. Good. Okay. So that's one idea. So basically what we've done is we've introduced this uh, parameter R and what this parameter R is doing is it's saying um, to what size of maximal clique am I going to be adding second order Lasserre uh, constraints. The other thing that we considered doing is that I said um, for very large maximal cliques we didn't want to add their second order relaxation. What if we took a, um, a subset of those quite large um, uh, maximal cliques and then included the second order relaxation for those, right? So basically what it would be is let's say I have uh, quite a large maximal clique uh, phi k, I choose some subset of that maximal clique and I go up to the second order Lasserre for that particular um, second 
uh, for that particular maximal for that particular subset of that maximal clique. There we go. Um, so, for instance, um, let's say that we have p is equal to one. That is, I'm that's my one more new parameter that I'm now introducing. So I have this new parameter p is equal to one, um, and I'm um, I'm going to choose um, from this maximal clique that has one, two, and three in it. I'm going to choose two elements. So I could choose one, two, I could choose one, three, or I could choose two, three. Um, and then once I have chosen that smaller subset of that bigger maximal clique, I will add uh, second order, the second order Lacerra relaxation, sparse relaxation uh, for that particular um, subset of that particular maximal clique. So it's worth it to kind of give an example of what I mean. Um, let's go back to my previous partial relaxation that was R is equal to two, where basically for the, the maximal clique um, that had one and four, I was going up to order two. And then for the maximal clique that had one, two, and three, I was only going up to order one. What I would do in a partial augmented relaxation if, for instance, I chose p is equal to one, so one additional constraint in that uh, bigger maximal clique, um, and that one additional constraint would include variables, say, one and two, what I would end up doing is I would in end up including um, this additional blue matrix. And I'm sorry that it's a little bit on top of itself, but I'm trying to um, uh, make a a point here that and what we end up doing is we kind of end up repeating a bunch of constraints over and over again. So what would happen is that I would additionally include what would have been the equivalent of the maximal clique constraint if the two elements in the clique were one and two. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to have size four. So basically blue, 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 blue and blue, 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 blue. It's taking rows and columns, um, specific rows and columns from that um, partial from that from the second order of the entire maximal clique. Um, and so what you will end up with if you would choose P to be a fairly large number is you'd end up with lots of, of constraints, lots of semi-definite constraints, all of which are small, all of which would somehow include uh, some of the same elements uh, as, as the others. So whether or not this is a good idea um, really is going to depend on the, the particular structure of the graph and things like this. But basically what we are doing is that we are taking certain rows and columns um, from uh, the, the second order relaxation of the larger maximal cliques and then adding them to the relaxation. Again, um, and I, I put these papers down at the bottom just to continue to make a point. For this particular example that I am giving, I do not claim that I am tightening anything. In fact, I would claim that I am not tightening anything. Um, I know from papers from uh, uh, up to 25 years ago that, in fact, if I was just to include a bunch of these two cliques, that I am doing nothing at all. Um, but if I was to include, say, um, R is greater than four, and um, uh, and some of these P's, I might indeed be doing something. And that's what I'll try to argue uh, next. Okay, Zoom, I think I'm going fast. All right, so um, the plus side is that we have introduced a number of ways of thinking about um, adding part of the second order sparse Lasser hierarchy to the first order sparse Lasser hierarchy. The possible negative side is that I have introduced two new parameters, both of which I'm now going to have to deal with, right? So let's talk about these two parameters so that I'm clear about what we've done. For one, there's this parameter R. The parameter R is saying, how big of maximal cliques am I going to sort of automatically include, um, add to my relaxation? There's also this P. The P is the number of constraints that I'm going to sort of add from the um, uh, from these things that would otherwise be a very large uh, second order uh, SDPs um, or second order moment matrices, um, and which ones am I, am I going to choose? So we've thought about a bunch of different things. One is I could choose randomly. So let's say um, I have R is equal to two. That is, I'm happy to go up to clique size two. Again, remember, I'm not gonna ever do this computationally. It's for an example. 
Um, P is equal to one, that means I'm gonna add one constraint. Um, here are the two sizes of the maximal cliques. And then let's say for that, um, for uh, that phi one, because I'm gonna be thinking about adding um, extra constraints for the phi one, that I know the weights uh, W12 is 10, W13 is two, and uh, W23 is three. So I want to add um, P is equal to one subsets. Um, so I could choose randomly. So I could choose randomly between one, two, one, three, and two, three. Fine, I could try that. Another thing that I could do is I could just pick um, the subset that, that corresponds to the largest weight. 10 is bigger than the other two, I pick 10. Um, I could maximize the number of maximal cliques um, in which everything is contained. So here, what I would do is I would choose, say, one, three, because, uh, you know, one, three is already a component of uh, phi two, so in include that. Um, or I could minimize the number of maximal cliques. Um, I could minimize, basically say, well, one, three is already in phi two, so I'm not going to include that as a new sort of maximal clique that I introduce. Instead, what I could do is I could uh, choose um, one, two, or two, three. Um, finally, I could think about sort of um, uh, basically combining, say, uh, H, uh, four, basically minimizing the overlap. And then when it's equivalent, when there's an equivalent amount of overlap using this H2. So um, because a lot of this uh, sort of uh, entire seminar series has to do with keeping us together, I'm going to zoom through the, the computational results just so that we have time to talk. Happy to come back to them, um, but uh, there you go. Um, we're gonna do numerical uh, results uh, anyone can quibble with me later, but our, our setup is both on the preprint and uh, on my slides. Um, we created uh, sparse graphs using the sparse pop uh, software. This is uh, the software that corresponds to the Wacky et al. paper. Um, and basically what we want to know is what does this R uh, mean? What we want uh, or what we wish would always happen is that basically when R is very small, we're already getting something that's very, very close to second order Lasser. So what we dream is that um, you don't have to make R very big before all of a sudden you're basically getting the equivalent of second order Lasser. Would be quite bad for us is if um, this relaxation just wasn't as good as second order Lasser until you were willing to add all of the maximal cliques of Wacky et al. Um, and then what we're doing is that we're thinking about um, what is the strength of the partial order relaxations. Um, so for instance, if we're able to solve up to say R is equal to 20, get to, to um, uh, size 20 uh, subsets, that's great. Um, we would have said that R hat is equal to seven in a case like this, where basically once we got to R is equal to seven, we noticed that, hey, we're doing as well as second order Lasser, that's great. Um, and then these are quite big problems. Um, so in the same way that we are actually not able to solve the big Wacky et al relaxation all the time, and we're also not able to solve these problems sometimes as R gets bigger. And so we will also just report an R when we reach a memory limit of R computer. Good. Um, so the first thing uh, to, to mention is that um, the, the biggest size of these maximal cliques um, minus R, uh, the R hat, which we find to be the sort of smallest R that would work, is pretty big. So the, the emphasis is that in this column, we find that there's, it's, um, that using our relaxations can be nice. Um, I will skip that one. Um, we also um, compare to Big Crunch. We compare to Big Crunch basically as an oracle. Um, to make it so that things are a bit more fair for Big Crunch, we um, take some def they, we take some parameters that they suggest in their documentation. Um, we run Big Crunch four times, and then we pick the best of the four Big Crunch uh, answers just to try to be uh, less abusive. Um, and then we're trying to find when um, we find a solution um, that is at least as good as Big Crunch, but we are changing this R hat value. Um, 
we find that we are significantly faster than BigCrunch even when we are using um, the best BigCrunch output um, for very sparse problems. So all of the blue is big crunch time divided by R time. So uh, the big crunch time can be up to 30 times longer than us. For sparse problems, uh, they're still fast. Or sorry, sorry for dense, denser problems, they're still faster. Um, I'm going to skip this, but basically we did a lot of uh, thinking about what heuristics we should use. And um, this is for the augmented relaxation where we're including a subset. And basically what you should not do is uh, have the, the uh, sort of maximum number of repetitions you should be using our H5. Um, we've done a number of other uh, comparisons of our uh, sort of uh, initial thing with the partial relaxation compared to this relaxation where we're including uh, subsets of the second order um, and basically figuring out when that uh, performs better. Um, I'm going to skip that. We looked at the max cut instances of uh, Fraucaliers and co authors. And basically, um, we are uh, significantly faster um, than Big Crunch, up to about 10 times uh, for some problems. And then for a few problems, um, they are faster than, than us. Um, and then we also compared to um, a recent sort of hierarchy of uh, Lisser and co-authors. Um, we, for a lot of different values of R, we were able to do something um, better. So all of the blue values of R were getting values at least as good as their second order relaxation. Um, and what you can see is that we're getting things that are orders of magnitude uh, faster. Um, they did um, then uh, come out with another paper that kind of uses our partial uh, augmented uh, relaxation idea and improved on it. And we have our code online. So they say that they have also improved our code. I admit we have not tested since uh, they made these improvements. Um, but I am excited that they also got our same sort of results, saw that they worked, um, and then improved on it. So basically, upside, um, we've strengthened uh, the Lacerre hierarchy. Downside, we have introduced two new parameters, R and P, um, but we're pretty confident in them for a fairly large um, uh, variety of, of problems. And um, yeah, that's me. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you very much, Ruth. Um, so we'll take some, uh, some questions uh, uh, now for a couple of minutes before moving to the social breakout rooms, uh, where you can also ask uh, more questions to uh, either one of the speakers. Any questions? Um, yeah, hi. Uh, one question about so, uh, the computational results. You yeah. mentioned that um, so you measured the time uh, spent to solve the problem and not to build them. Uh, do you have some order of idea of how much time it is taken for that? Okay, so that's a that's a very very good question. Um, the thing that takes us the longest time in the, um, and this is particularly in the augmented relaxation, is that I mentioned that we have these enormous um, second order matrices, and then we're choosing subsets from them. Um, I'm ignorant enough about uh, these sorts of algorithms that I'm not sure if it's because of our implementation or if it's just that it's a difficult uh, problem, but we're very, very slow on that. Um, and so basically, for instance, this comparison with the CS, TSS, that's a lot of S's, but the, the many S's method. Um, the, um, that one, we, there's no way we would be anywhere near them if we were sort of searching through all of these, um, these, these parameters. Um, I thought in our paper, we should also have um, timings where we are including our building and we're fast, we're still fast but we're not gonna be orders of magnitude fast again. Um, the, for instance, the big crunch code, like that's a really well-built code um, that really thinks about a lot of stuff that's really great. Um, and I mean, I would recommend taking a look, I mean, it's, a, it's amazing code, um, but basically um, 
that that code base, um, I guess we're not thinking, we're not trying to, when we compare against them, we're truly not trying to set ourselves up as a competitor, you know? It is rather that, hey, cool, wouldn't these, could we convince these big crunch people to also implement uh, these ideas that we think are really good? Cool, thanks a lot. Great. Uh... Okay, Alex, should we uh, move to the to the breakout rooms and then if there are additional questions uh, for Ruth, um, folks can join us there. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to both Robert and to Ruth for these great talks. Uh, Ruth, we didn't get to do an intro to you. Um, you you were so eager. You started. Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. I don't. I'm Ruth. I don't need any. <laughs> but, um, yeah, exactly. Well, we... Uh, but yes, uh, we, we really appreciate both of you. Uh, all of, Both of these talks will be available online in the next, uh, let's say, week or so on our website. And stay tuned for announcements about our uh, next uh, session or next, well, next series of DOTS talks. And if you're interested in being a speaker, there's a form that you can fill out on our website. Uh, just list it, and then we will try to get in touch with you once we make our selections. So uh, thank you, everybody, and stick around for the breakout rooms. And otherwise, until next time.